Welcome everyone. Adam the Woo here as a recording of this Wednesday, December 7th, 2022. I am standing here on a Louisiana bayou, fictionally. In reality, I am in Central Florida. I'm gonna do the filming locations from the 1998 comedy starring Adam Sandler, The Water Boy. Tagging along with me today, Roll the mica. Who dat? Who dat? Who dat? Who? Who? Who dat? Who dat? Is that when he gets like knocked out? Who dat? Who dat? Who dat? <laughs> we just recently we did the Ernest Saves Christmas locations and we yeah. teamed up for that. And we thought to ourselves, selves, let's team up again and share some of. I'm going to share some of my memories because I was yeah. I, I did a little bit part in the Water Boy. Yeah. I was at the Citrus Bowl. So I'll show some photos I have from that, talk about some of the me being an extra yeah. in that, and also show some of the locations, some of the, so those I found, some you found. Yeah. So if we combine efforts. Yeah, the we, Ballad of Bobby Boucher. I, I, I'm just calling it that. We could just go with that. Was that on the soundtrack? Maybe, it could be, it should be a song. The Ballad of Bobby Boucher. We're starting here <laughs> first, right off of Lake Louisa. I think Louisa. Lake, Lake Louisa, there's this little river of some sort. Well, it's not a river, it's a swamp. But this is where Mama's house was and where Bobby Boucher lived. So we're going to start here, and this will all be filmed in no order whatsoever, chronologically to the film. Just, we're going to cover some ground. All right, I'm inviting you to join me and World of Micah for the Waterboy locations. Shall you? High, what's, that's high quality H2O. <laughs> it's cold and it's clean. <laughs> like this, I think this might be the intro scene when the credit sequence shows before it pans over to the football stadium. But we're gonna walk over there. A couple interesting facts here. This is from the Lake Sentinel from February 2nd of 98. From what I heard, it only took about three or four weeks to film the entire movie, but this gives some clues on the first location. So it says Claremont there, the corner well, not the corner, but the between Lake Susan and Lake Louisa, that's how you pronounce it. It was also a Disney movie, Touchstone Pictures. But this shows right here on the Palatkaha, Palatkaha ha, River <laughs> Park. It says here that it was tightly closed up, but people here off of Hull Road, so we found Hull Road, would show up, and Sandler was signing autographs and whatnot, where Mama's house was built, right? Over there. Let's take a walk. Now this little dock over here is come like, well not completely, but kind of submerged in water over here. Now this is the back side of that tree where they were grilling up over here. Sandler and Kathy Bates were doing a little grilling there. They got in a little, you know, Kathy got in an argument with Fruza Balk, who played Vicky Valancourt, and they walked over here and Mama's house but it basically been built right over here in this area. For an example here, here's this photograph from the film. So you can see over here is the picnic table and there is this very unique tree here in the house. Mama's house was built on the other side of that very unique tree, which at the moment is silhouetted out by the sun, but the tree still stands. It definitely has the same limbs and everything there. There is no confusion that this was the spot where mama's house was built and just to the side of the tree is where the dock and the airboat was so the dock would have been here just about in this area you see it's all overgrown now so there was like a, a fake dock they built you can even see a piece of woody well that's like a piece of lumber there no that actually is part of a tree and then right over in here was where the airboat was more or less like this that scene at the end where they jump on. I think he says, you ready, lady? I'm ready, lady, something like that. And then the airboat takes off. Here's another angle here of Adam Sandler, Kathy Bates, Bobby Boucher and his mom, mama, in front of that tree. Both of them standing right about there, give or take. Now the house itself, which is interesting, would have been kind of over here like just over in that section there. So just off to the side, like this, behind this behind this tree. I'm gonna try to walk over this little water here and go out on the, the edge of this dock and see if I can match anything looking back the other way. 
So they would have built another bridge. Probably was not this one, but they built another one that he rode the lawnmower across here, looking back at where the house would have been over in here. So the camera would have been set up on the other side of this little waterway, looking back kind of where I'm standing now, where the house would have been built. You can kind of sort of match the trees up, but you know, it's kind of tough. There's just so many like cypress trees. Now, I can't say for certain, but it almost looks like this cypress tree here with a very thick base is the one that's right in front of us looking back at the shoreline. I think the water was way lower then than it is now too, because where we are at is kind of where the house would have been and it's submerged in water now. So obviously I think the water's a little higher, but I think, don't quote me on this, but I think that might be the tree looking back kind of that direction. And they could have also built this up just a little bit. Yeah. Like you were saying, they may have like built the dirt up just a little bit. And yeah, to make it more sound. More solid. Yeah, totally. But more or less, you, know, you could see a lot of these similar trees over here and then the house would have been kind of like over in this area. But the tree is the giveaway for sure. And obviously I found a lot of, a lot of old newspaper articles and things like that giving away the spots, but I also found somebody was out here recently McAndrew Travels stumbled on their video and they also found the tree. So shout out to them. That's how I knew the tree was still in existence. But yeah, right here. This is where Vicki Valencourt was and she was like chewing down on the gator, eating the biting the head off the alligator. Yeah, man. And the little dock they ran up on and the and the airboat. Yeah, it's really hard to match a lot of this up. And I, I also believe the interiors for Mama's house were probably on a sound stage. Also fun fact, even though they could have used MGM Studios, it was the, from what I was reading, it was the first Disney Touchstone movie that utilized Universal Studios Florida, not Hollywood, for some of the interior shots they built a set. So I think when, when Henry Winkler shows off his Roy Orbison tattoo that was not in Mama's house here. It was probably at Universal Studios. <laughs> Just, when you... Mama don't know, <laughs> don't hurt her. Yeah, definitely very tough to match a lot of this up over all these years. Water stuff's difficult, changes. Definitely, yeah. Pretty dang cool though. Yeah, dude, this is sacred. I mean, the Adam's tree, family. the tree is the giveaway. It is, man. Pretty dang neat. I'm also wearing an appropriate t-shirt. This isn't the water boy, but it's also an Adam, you know, I like old Adam Sandler movies, so wearing an appropriate t-shirt is Billy Madison, if you didn't know. Here's another article how I was talking about Universal Florida, Universal Orlando versus MGM. So it says, all those touchstone was part of the Disney organization. Principal scenes of the water boy are being shot at rival Universal Studios in Orlando. The reason is another Disney film, Instinct, Starring Anthony Hopkins is currently taking up both sound stages at the studios. And a completely different news article saying Studio Switch. Disney produced feature Waterboy shooting Universal Studios Florida. Adam Sandler Flick will be the first Disney filmed to be shot at a rival theme park, even though it was released Touchstone. Pretty fascinating. A little history, a little uh, Studio Switch history here in Florida. We have made the commute over to St. Cloud now, about an hour from where we just were. And I'm showing the water tower here because I wanted to point out. The church I used to go to, my dad used to preach at this church over here, which was First Christian. And I was recollecting in my mind, we also lived in the parsonage, which is behind the church. But I was remembering on a Sunday, because after church, my sister said, hey, there's a rumor that Adam Sandler is downtown. And downtown St. Cloud is that way, about two blocks. So after church, walked over to see them filming at the Hunter Arms Hotel, the party scene. But I just wanted to show here, and I looked up a newspaper article, and it in fact was on a Sunday after church. And I guess my memory is still okay, because it, it states here that it was a Sunday. A downtown business will be the site Sunday, filming for a movie. It was a one day experience from 7 a.m. to 7 p.m. I didn't get over there till probably around 11.30 or noon. Starring Adam Sandler, Kathy Bates, and Henry Winkler. In fact, I met Henry Winkler down there by the Hunter Arms. I'll show all that when we get over there. Yep, I still remember walking down here just a couple blocks away, going around the back alley, which is over that way, 
and seeing a lot of the cast and the crew walking in and out of there. Now for a while you couldn't get inside this building. It was apartments, but now it's back to being a hotel. Last time I was down here we were able to walk in, so I'm hoping we get to get to walk in there and match some of the stuff up from the party scene where Colonel Sanders comes down the stairs and and all that. Coach Klein's talking about how they need to win more games. Now they won their first game, but should, should have a little make it a little easier winning games now that they won their first game. All right, here's another article. St. Cloud Bread and Breakfast becomes frat house for Disney film. When you think of Waterboy, you really don't think of it being a Disney film, but it is. Just wanted to show another one here. Located, the address, 1025 New York Avenue in the movie. Producers decided that Hunter Orange would be a perfect place to film a college frat party. It's also kind of interesting because Feruza Balk was here who played Vicki Valancourt, but I do not recall her being in a scene that took place inside the party itself. Henry Winkler did have a scene. In fact, Henry Winkler was walking over here. I met Henry over here, and he was very nice to all the, the locals here in St. Cloud and took pictures with everyone, just kind of standing right in here. So that was pretty, that was pretty awesome. I think Micah has found something. You find it? So you're looking for the scene when Adam Sandler shows up with the, the frog legs and the, and the cakes or whatever it was? He opens the door. Well, there's an overhang over here that can be seen right above Sandler's. Door. Micah just discovered that that is the overhang. In fact, that little metal, the little metal pieces there can be seen when the door opens and the football players see Sandler coming in. Yeah, that's, the, that's it. Yeah, and that tree was there. It's just smaller. Way Good smaller. Eye. Good eye. Just to show what it looked like there, so over Sandler's head, there is that little metal rod holding up the awning right there. That's so cool. I like this kind of vintage looking sign. This sign was probably here back in early 98. So they filmed it in early 98 and the movie came out in late 98. So filmed and released in the same year and the movie made a lot more money in the theaters than it took to make. So it was considered a success. Now on this particular day, even though I walked down here, I had to—I was working at Publix then, I had to be at work at 2 p.m. So I was not able to wait around, obviously couldn't get inside because they were filming. But my sister was able to meet Adam Sandler in that back alley. Also, more to the story, I was also an extra at the Citrus Bowl. But this was the first time I had even heard of the movie. I did not know what the water boy was until I showed up that day and my sister told me that Adam Sandler was down here filming a new movie. Pretty neat. All these years that I've been in the Hunter Arms, I didn't realize if you just stepped out this door, where's that little, that little metal awning there? In the door. Yeah. Which means he would have took the frog cakes and walked right in where the, the old doors were, right here. Yep. And inside. And once you get inside, you can kind of match up the, a couple different areas. You can match up a fireplace, which when he has the frog cakes, the, the, the guy who has like the cross eye, He's like standing in front of the fireplace, but you don't, you don't really see it too much, but the fireplace does match up, even though there's a lot of people dancing, the extras are dancing. But you can kind of sort of match up the fireplace, it's still the same. And then the Colonel Sanders look-alike, the teacher comes down the stairs, and Sandler kind of has an interaction, asking if they're still gonna have the test and all that coming up the follow, in the following, following days or week. And then also where the two girls are hitting on him, I wish you were my boyfriend. That was like directly across from the staircase that Colonel Sanders came down. And a couple things in here have changed a little bit too, where Henry Winkler is talking, was in an area that's like, doesn't really look the same anymore, but he was sitting up against kind of a little, a little doorway entering in, sitting around with the other, the other guys on the football team. You know, they were all excited to win their very, very first game. Now have made it up to the Citrus Bowl, for a Citrus Bowl, I think it's called Camping World now where they put out a casting call basically for 10,000 extras and myself, a friend that I worked with at Kmart, and my sister, the three of us, attended. I think I worked all overnight that night, got up early and showed up here to the Citrus Bowl. I don't think 10,000 people showed up. I think it was probably more like four or 5,000. And they basically just moved us around the stadium so different angles could make it look like the stadium was full. But you can see me pretty noticeably, a younger, thinner, and blonde haired version of myself in the stands inside this very stadium for the bourbon bowl that took place in here. In fact, these are two photos that I took with a handheld disposable camera from that day. In fact, you can see Adam Sandler here, not in his wardrobe, 
but he's throwing up free t-shirts to those in the crowd, the extras. There's Sandler right there. So my seats were basically at the end zone where the, the climactic ending took place and also where Sandler and the rest of the team ran out and is, you know, runs out at the beginning of the Bourbon Bowl after halftime. So these are two photos that I have. I didn't have any photos of myself in the stands, but I will show some from the, some clips from the movie or some screen grabs from the movie. Now in most of the scenes where I am visible, I am kind of two or three rows back from all these guys over here that have the body paint on and holding up the signage. And I am here, so my sister's here wearing a blue shirt. I am wearing like a maroon sleeved shirt that has a kind of a white torso, but check me out with the blonde hair there. Here's a little closer angle. That is me, my sister's laughing, and that is me with the blonde, very lengthy blonde tips. Like I said, a much thinner, younger me. Now when they run out of the, the little side over here, so there's Henry Winkler in the mascot when Sandler comes out and time to open up a can <laughs> of whoop ass. <laughs> I am up here next to a sign over here. I think it says, get it done or something like that. But I am right there in the middle of the screen. The way to really see is kind of the blonde tips and the maroon, so like the maroon color style on the, the sleeves. So just keep an eye out for that get it done signage. So right over Adam Sandler's shoulder, right, there's me right there kind of like faintly seen with my hands up. <laughs> then immediately after they do the dog pile right on the, on the field, you can see my anger face here. See me right there like flailing my arm around? Right there in the middle, that's like after the dog pile. They said, they told all the extras, act angry. So I acted angry. There's me right there. See me like flailing. Looks like I'm throwing my pom pom at the. <laughs> but it's been so long ago. That was early 1998. Do you remember at halftime when Bobby Boucher showed up and the Mud Dogs won the Bourbon Bowl? I do you? I... <laughs> All right. Wasn't expecting it, but I guess they are having an event in here today. And we just walked in. So we're just walking in. We're going to walk in over here. And once inside, it definitely looks a lot different than it did back then they've actually kind of added more seats and whatnot onto it but this is definitely the same stadium well obviously it is because i was here and it's confirmed but the area that they ran out of it's like a little kind of like a little alcove area that goes from the dressing room out still kind of looks the same and i was sitting over in that area that's also where bobby boucher got the second to last touchdown when he picked up the fumble and ran it and all that it was kind of over in that corner and i was sitting like second or third row up I'll try to find. I'll try to find the actual se section that I was sitting in. And I feel if we walk this way around the back other side of the stadium, we'll be able to show the exact tunnel that the entire Mud Dogs team ran out of onto the field. Oh, so long ago. Now, as stated, has certainly been remodeled quite a bit since 1998. This is kind of the same general area of where I was sitting. And uh, also the, showing the photos of where Sandler and the rest of the cast and crew and everything was, kind of throwing out the t-shirts, was right over here with the 10-yard line and the, and the area, the, the end zone and all that. And also kind of where a lot of the main scenes took place. I think most of us were, the extras were kind of crammed in this one corner for, for a majority of it. They're actually doing a, a Pop Warner Super Bowl here right now. So we were able to walk in and see the stadium because normally you can't get in here unless it's a big event and they have the, the stadium in this fashion. Pretty awesome to, to be able to see this. Also, the other side of the end zone from where I was sitting is where the last touchdown, but as pointed out, this is where at the beginning they all ran out. I was sitting over here. They all ran out here. Adam Sandler ran out to there. Time to open, what's it say? Time to open up a- You're mesmerized by the game. You're like completely game. mesmerized. And Micah- ball is not for the devil. Micah pointed out too, they kind of like, I don't know if they CGI'd them, but all the extras were not up in here. So they duplicated a lot of us that were here and into this whole top area here. Now this over here was all added on years later. This used to be, used to be able to see out, or maybe this used to be able to see out. I think all this was added on later. And it's interesting, the section I was sitting in was 126 or 127. So it seems like the sections are two off of what they were before. And I believe all this was built on later since 98 as well. We did not think we were gonna get in here. You or I were like, there's no way we're gonna get in there. But we're in here. Look at, look at this, Micah. I know. Here, stand over here. 
the bourbon bowl. You know what foosball is, right? It's the devil. It's no, the it's devil. not. It's for my Bobby. <laughs> Foosball's the, for the devil. <laughs> Kathy Bates thinks everything is the devil. I invented electricity. Ben Franklin is the devil. All right, let's move on to the next spot. This was awesome to be able to get in here. Chalk that one up to something I did not think was going to happen today on a Wednesday, getting inside the Citrus Bowl. All right, moving on to the next spot. That worked out pretty well. I also wanted to show this article that I found talking about the 10,000 people who are trying to gather 10,000 people to afford a Citrus Bowl, Citrus Bowl to help film key scenes of the comedy. Adam Sandler, Waterboy, Henry Winkler. Free tickets were given away. Free tickets for the 8 a.m. to 4.30 p.m. So I guess I was in there eight and a half hours at the stadium. And also, they were accepting bins of food for tornado. There was a tornado that came through, so they were getting relief for a, for a tornado. So even though it was free, obviously, you know, getting 10,000 people in there needed it to be free. And then also, here's another one in a different newspaper. Waterboy Extra, 10,000 extras. I'm going to say maybe a third of that really showed up between 10 and 4. Florida Citrus Bowl before it was Camping World Stadium. Tampa Avenue and West South Street in Orlando. I made the commute over to Michigan Street and located at 35 West Michigan Street is this credit union, which used to be a seafood place. The wrap party for the movie itself took place in here. Over 400 guests. It's a seafood place by the name of Townsend's. And I found a couple articles online about it. It was, it was quite a shindig inside of here. And the interesting thing is, looks like the building has been torn down, but I've typed in the coordinates right here at 35 West Michigan Street in Orlando. Now there's a bank sitting here. But they publicized the rap party. Anybody could have showed up. As stated here, if you haven't seen Adam Sandler around town, tonight might be your last chance. Wedding singer star rap party, you know, for the water boy, slated for 8 p.m. to midnight. Four hours, you could have come up here and met Adam Sandler when he walks out. The restaurant will be shut down for dining, so you might not be able to get in, according to this article. But you can kept, catch a glimpse of Sandler when he gets there or leaves. Who knows? If he sings, as expected, Sandler might even belt out some tunes. Maybe he'll be loud enough to be heard from outside. <laughs> Another article says, all eyes on model guests. This is after the party. 400 cast and crew members of the movie were decked out of the rap party Sunday the Townsend's Restaurant in Orlando, which closed, what year did it close? 20 years ago? 2000. 2000. Oh, in 2000, so it's been closed for 22 years. Tyra Banks was also here, who showed up with several stunning girlfriends, danced the night in platform shoes and skin-tight, super short, silver dress. This is a real article I'm reading. Happened right over there at Townsend's. Seafood place. It's amazing what you can find in newspaper articles. There's no parking here, by the way. There's no parking on that sign. This is Lake Susanna, where there used to be a Navy base right over in here. Now there's some apartments and condos and whatnot, but back in the day, there were a lot of empty, kind of desolate buildings through here. And one of the buildings was here on the base, and I'm not sure exactly where it was, looking at some old satellite images, but somewhere in this general vicinity was the, what they used, the facade, they used for the hospital where Bobby Boucher's mom was in the hospital and all the town folk came out and were, you know, given their, uh, trying to get them hyped up to, to come back and join the team. And that was all right in here. And the only reason I figured that out is I found a newspaper article and I saw an old photo of what the hospital looked like. It was right, right in this general area, give or take, you don't know somewhere in this acreage right here. So here is the hospital. This was the building here. And the way, a lot of the buildings did not look like this, but this is the only one on the property back there. It's been bulldozed that had that awning down below and it had the windows with that style right there. And Bobby was peeking out the window above the awning. So there it is, there's that awning. They put the Jackson Bayou Hospital font across there. There's Sandler up in that window. There's a little top portion protruding off the roof. Set dressed. It was not a real hospital. It was just a building. And there's Bobby up in the window there. And as well there. Pretty cool. 
here's the article that kind of gave me the hint. So the wing of a prison in the film Instinct was also the same building. But then it says, and the exterior of the hospital from the other film also was in the Waterboy, stated here, also scheduled to debut this fall, is really a base building. Look at that. This article from the Orlando Sentinel. We have made another hour commute, give or take, from the last place. I should say all these spots are really, really spread out around Central Florida. We're gonna, nightfall is about to rear its head. Still quite a bit of spots to go to, but this is the High Banks boat ramp in DeBerry, Florida. And this is where the scene where they had the pep rally was, right over in here. In fact, they had a, a huge river boat, which can only be seen for a brief moment, which is, I always found kind of unusual that they had a river boat parked over here. And after the pep rally, they all started, you know, kind of chanting and whatnot and went and got on the river boat over here. But right in here was all the extras, all the, the cast, all the football team. All took place right in here. Secret filming spot for the water boy. Someone that was here left, gave a quote to the newspaper saying, I thought there would be a lot more action. <laughs> but you see it says DeBerry there and they're talking about it. this. This was where it gives the specifics of you know, signifying this is here at the Highlands Road public boat ramp. Right here. This article goes on to talk about the director, Frank Karachi, I believe that's how you pronounce it, who I believe also directed Wedding Singer, and he was the dad at the end that Kathy Bates tackles at the wedding scene, gathered a group of extras around Schneider, Rob Schneider, on cue the actor shouted his lines in an exaggerated Cajun accent. The water boy cheats, cut his head off. I think they dropped the, they dropped one word. Cut his, you know what, head off. Now a lot of this area has been redone looks a little bit different. But over there is where they ran, they had the jazz band, the team, the mud dogs ran out of the woods. Right over here on this little area is where they were given the speech and all that. And then the tour, the other, the other team bus pulled in right here, right along here. And there's just like a ton of people right over in this section. And then after the pep, pep rally, they all ran along here past this tree and onto a dock that was probably in the same place as this dock where the big riverboat was, right here. And of course, one of the most famous lines from the movie that has gone on to live on pretty much forever happened right here. Well, actually happened right over here. You can do it! <laughs> you can do it! You can do it! Oh yes we can, and yes we will. <laughs> You can do it! And then it gets more and more and more <laughs> exaggerated. You can do it all night long! <laughs> you can do it! So right here across the way, so there's the riverboat over here to the side. And there's the crowd all there in the little boat dock area. But notice this tree. I think this is the same tree. It's just gotten a lot bigger where they all go kind of go by it. And then the, the riverboat kind of over there at that angle. But I think this tree is this tree right over here. There really is no way of confirming it. I mean, this no, is it looks like it. 24 years of growth, but it looks like the same kind of limb pattern. Mm -hmm. And then kind of went, this has been redone. You can kind of see it looks kind of similar, but I think there was like a concrete piece here that went over to where they crossed over to the riverboat. But this over here, now that I'm saying it, this really does look the same, you know, where the bus kind of pulled down. You can do it! Man, I don't even want to leave the spot. I just want to, you can do it all night long. <laughs> you can do it all night long. This is pretty neat. Look at this gator. Look at this gator head right here. Yeah. Walking back over the car to go to the next spot. Right here at the High Banks Marina. All right, on to the next spot. I think we got like two more to go. That's it. You know, thinking about how spread out all these spots off, you might get a little discouraged thinking you can't do it all in one day. But I keep telling myself, you can do it! You can do it! All night long! I was just saying, like, if anyone gets discouraged, they can't do all this in one day. I just said the same thing! Yeah, you said the same thing. I Great did. Mind, 
So what I'm telling myself and you and anyone else that wants to do this in one day. Yes, you can. You can do it! <laughs> yes, you will. Yes, you can. And yes, you will. <laughs> you can do it! I sound more like Arnold. You, That's right. That's right. <laughs> You can do it! You can do it! You Look can do eyes. it! Do it there! All night long! <laughs> I'm gonna go do it! <laughs> Carried on just a bit and now have arrived over at Speck Martin Stadium. This was about 20 minutes from, give or take, from the last place we were at. And this is where the football field was. Not where they played the Bourbon Bowl, but where they played all their other games, including the first game they won. This is here in DeLand, Florida. Now obviously the stadium here has been completely revamped and redone. In fact, this big towering object above the bleachers was not there. But this was basically the side where they had the Mud Dogs logo and all that. And can't get in. Got lucky with the Citrus Bowl, but this is all kind of closed off. You just kind of have to look at it from a distance, but pretty much the entire thing down there has been renovated. But look at the tower off in the distance. You could see that. So you got the blinking tower in the distance. You could see that in a couple, a couple of moments of the movie off in the distance too. Also fun fact, where the coach's, Coach Klein's office was, was in this building in the distance over there. So that building there at the end of the field is where the interiors from Coach Klein's office was, which is directly behind us. We're pretty much doing a full walk around the stadium here. It doesn't look like we're gonna be able to get in. Even if we could, we wouldn't be able to see too much inside there, but this is definitely the place. Reading another article, 900 extras are sought for scenes in the film. Volunteers should report at Hubbard Ave, that's the stadium's ticket office by 8 a.m. on that day. In lieu of payment, the producers will give extra lunches. Kind of reminds me of Blazing Saddles when he hands out the paddle balls. Give these out in lieu of pay. That means no pay. In order to see, I have my, my car cranked and the lights on. But this building here, where all the interiors of the hallway scenes, when Bobby goes to Coach Klein's office, and Henry Winkler's watching the playback tapes and all that, and Adam Sandler's character sees the disgusting water and offers to be the water boy for free, if he just doesn't serve those people, serve the... <laughs> it's it. imperative that you allow me to be the team's water boy. <laughs> but that was all right inside here. There's no access given to this, even if we were here during the day. But if you were to get in there, you would see that it all pretty much looks exactly the same. And I can't really decide exactly which of these, which Coast Klein's office, but it was in this very building, which is very, very close to the stadium. In fact, the stadium is right over there. Someone is approaching with a light on a bicycle. Here is the hallway scene where he's walking down to go to the office and one more inside the office. Notice the same green walls as well going from the hallway into the office itself. And that's all inside that building. And now on campus at Stetson University. The medulla oblongata. <laughs> kind of looks like the Colonel. He does. No, Colonel Sanders. You're wrong. Mama's right. Now, this is not supposed to be Colonel Sanders. This is John B. Stetson, who the school is named after. And the interiors of the classroom scene from the medulla oblongata scene were at a totally different place. However, when Sandler looks outside the window and explains the reason why he took the class, was for the view, it is this very fountain right over here. This is the fountain that they show. As shown right here, kind of like a you know, bird's eye out of the window perspective looking down at that very fountain. This next spot was a little difficult to find. We kind of walked all over probably for about 20 or 30 minutes before discovering that the student union building here 
And the reason it was very confusing is even on Street View, and recently, this used to be a road through here, but they have redone it. Now it's just a sidewalk and a grassy area. But this is where Bobby and Vicki Valancourt walked out after Bobby passed his test right inside here. Looks exactly the same, except the thing that threw us off was where the officer drives up and lets him know that his mother is sick and in the hospital. Does not look anything like it did in the film. Very recently, they changed all this landscaping. But here is the front of the building, same stairwell leading down, same pillars, doors have been changed, window up top has been changed. And there's, there's them out front. And she's like, welcome to your manhood. And he had no idea what she was referring to about how she was gonna show more of like what it meant to be a man later on or welcoming him to his manhood. These are the stairs. They were kind of like right down here standing. And they've replaced those doors. And these were not the interiors. The interiors were like a basketball gym where he took his test. Wow, this looks so different. As shown here, it used to be a street that ran right up to the front of this building. No more road, only walking traffic right along here. This was a confusing one. We walked around here for a while. Because I was telling them on my video, if you get on Google Earth, it's completely different. Yeah, street view, the street's still here. Yep. Never trust the internet. No, and our maps were throwing us for a loop. Yeah, we found it though. We did. And the gym's around here somewhere. It is, we're gonna go find it. Cummings Gym. Let's find it. Where he takes the test was in a gym. The gym still exists. And uh, Micah was noticing the windows still match up with a very unique kind of crossing of the beams up top there. It's a basketball gym a building right across there. I had no idea it was up on like the second floor of this building. But there's the cross windows up top. Especially with the unique pattern when you watch that clip back. You got the two regular style windows and then this cross one at the top. Just like in the movie. It's on the second floor of this building. The 536 building. Very difficult to see, but if you peek in the window, you can see the gym in there. Can't really make out the basketball hoop. But that's about the angle there. Not 100% certain if it was the camera was facing where I'm standing or the other way, like facing now, but it's pretty awesome. I think this is the spot right here because you can see this vent on the bottom of that window next to the door. And then there's some kind of mechanism there. Okay. Oh yeah. Good call. Focus. Yeah, there is some sort of mechanism there. Very interesting. Mm -hmm. That could be it. Got to wonder which window Vicky was holding the sign in. I know, right? All right. That's going to do it for today. We covered a lot of ground. We did. We did a lot <laughs> of spots. We started, mm -hmm. gosh, around 9 a.m., 9.30 a.m. Yeah. this morning at the first spot. Yep. It is already night for Fanny to get to start kind of early. Yeah. What time is it? It's not as late as we think. It's 7... 7.42. Yeah. It's a good day. Yeah. You can do most of the spots, or almost all the spots in one day, yeah. but it definitely is a trek. Put some miles on the car. Yeah. Also check out World of Micah's version. He also filmed today. Yeah. Gave his little, little tidbits, opinions, thoughts, critiques, behind the scenes, <laughs> and wonderful <laughs> concepts of the film that both him and I I've seen probably more times than we should have seen. Yeah. <laughs> and it was funny re-watching to find all these things. I remembered the whole movie, so I knew exactly where to fast forward to. It's crazy how things stay in your mind. It is. High quality H2O behind us. Yeah. I'll see you in the next video. The vlog is over. Water sucks.
Gatorade is better. <laughs> Gatorade. Water boy. I we caught with this. the H2O. We did this in one day, dude. That is not an easy task. It can be done. It covered a lot of ground, but pack your patience. But it's fun. We did the hard work for you. Now you guys can go off and find a location for yourself. Take photos. It's been a lot of fun, but it is time to say goodbye. Stay here.